Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Deli Check-In. It is December 1st, 2020, and it's Tuesday, which means it's Terraform Tuesday, and I've got some tacos in my examples, so that's always exciting for me. We are going to be talking about how to create modules in Terraform. This was kind of a, a viewer request that came in was I did something around modules and outputs, but this is more just like you want to create a module. Why would you do that? What are the best practices for creating a module and where can you publish a module? So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Before we get into that, just a quick reminder, I do have a Terraform certification guide and I got some great feedback from a purchaser today who said they tried to take the exam the first time, they didn't pass, they got the guide, they did some of the practice questions that Brian Krausen has up on, I think it's on Udemy, and between those two, they were able to take it a second time and pass, so that's awesome, I'm excited for that person, and if you're interested in that guide, the link will be down in the description, so you can go out and grab it, it is only $15, that's the minimum purchase price, you know, if you want to be more generous, it's, it's the giving season, I wouldn't complain about it, so <laughs> enough of that, let's check in, how you doing? How's, how's it going? It's going, it's a Tuesday. It's it's the beginning of December. It's the beginning of the end. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're excited. Maybe if you're doing Advent, you've started that little Advent calendar. My kids got chocolate today. They're all pumped about getting to open their Advent calendar and get their chocolate, which like the chocolate isn't really that good, but you know, it's the excitement of opening something that really, that's what jazzes them. It's funny because my parents, we had an Advent calendar, but it was just doors you opened. And then my mom might give me a treat but it wasn't like embedded in the thing. But now my kids, they, they get a chocolate for every day. So good for them. I guess that's progress. <laughs> oh, dear. Let's talk about Terraform and modules. All right. So modules. Well, Terraform is all about modules. In fact, when you create a configuration, you may not realize it, but you are creating a module. It's called the root module. So the main configuration file, that main folder, the directory you're working in when you're working with Terraform is the root module and everything branches off of that. So when you create a module inside your root module, it's kind of like a nested module. That's pretty cool. Now, why would you create something more than your root module? Well, part of this is from the world of programming. They have this thing called dry or DRY, do, don't repeat yourself. And the idea is if you're doing something multiple times, then it might make sense to abstract it in some way and then just reuse that abstraction, reuse that piece of code. And sometimes that's done through a function. If you've done a lot of programming, you've probably created functions for something you do over and over again, so you don't have to keep putting that into your code. And it's done for a whole bunch of other things like interfaces, etc. This is a very common pattern in programming. In the world of Terraform, the idea is if there's a resource or a set of resources that you create a lot or create multiple times, and you want to like sort of standardize the way that those things are created, you can use a module. Another reason might be you want to break up your code into more components to make it a little more readable and in case you want to reuse some of those components or swap them out later, taking a modularized approach makes a lot of sense. And I've seen this taken to the extreme. I've seen configurations where they use a module for every resource type. So a VPC is a module, a load balancer is a module, a storage account is a module, like everything is a module. And it actually, at that point, it actually makes it harder to read the configuration. So there's probably a break even point there. That's basically why you want to use modules. Now, you can just grab modules from the public Terraform registry, or if you have an internal private registry, you can do that too. You can reference a file path if you want to pull a module in. So there's lots of ways to get a module into your configuration. Let's take a look at a module that I wrote, and that also has a nested module in it. We'll see how it works, and also talk about some of the best practices when it comes to using a module. All right, so let me go ahead and share out the old screen here. And we are working in my 2020 1201 folder of my official Terraform Tuesday GitHub repository. If you go on my GitHub repo, it's in the description as well. You'll be able to find my Terraform Tuesday repository and it has all of these files in it. Okay, so we have a main.tf file here. Actually, let me just close all of these and we'll start with the main.tf. All right, so we've got a main.tf file. And we define some variables here. We're defining a variable for meat, cheese, 
and the shell we want to use for our taco. This is all about tacos. And then we're invoking a module and we're giving it a name of my taco. That's the name of the module that we can use to refer within this configuration. The source of that module is in a subdirectory called taco. So it knows it can go to that subdirectory and get that module. And we're going to pass it some values. So we're going to pass it the three variables we've defined. We've defined meat, cheese, and shell. We're going to pass those three over to the module. And then we're going to take the output of that module and print it as output for our configuration. So we're not using any cloud resources. This is totally free and it's all theoretical. It's all good. For that value, we're just going to get this output called taco that we've defined in our module. So let's take a look at our taco module. And obviously this is a contrived example, but it sort of illustrates what you could do with a module. Let's say I wanted to reuse this taco module. I could reuse it for multiple different configurations and I could put it somewhere in a shared area that could be reused. Okay, so this is our module called tacos. And what's in here? We've got a file called license. We've got a file called readme and a file called main and then a subdirectory called salsa. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, best practices, especially if you're planning to publish one of your modules in a public repository, even a private one, is to include a readme that explains what the purpose of this module is. That readme could be pretty important, and you can actually put a lot of detail in here. If you go on the Git, the actual Terraform registry and look at one of the really well done modules there, one of the official modules, they put a lot of information into that readme to help give examples of how to use this module in real life. So you can copy those examples. I kept this super simple. You also want to include a license because if somebody else is going to use your code at some point, they might want to know what the conditions are for using this code. Now I have the standard MIT license here, but you know, like I said, some organizations will say, well, if there's no license associated with that module, we can't use it because we don't know what strings are attached. Okay. And then we have a main.tf file, and this is where the magic happens. This is the actual configuration. Now, it doesn't all have to be in a main.tf. You can have a variables.tf and a main and an outputs or however you want to break this up. The name's not important. The .tf file is. So this is our module, basically, our taco module. And I've done a couple interesting things here. So I've defined three variables. And you'll notice that the names of those variables correspond pretty closely to the things that we specified when we were invoking the module in our main. In fact, they're exactly the same. Meat, cheese, and shell are the values that we are the names of the values that we passed, and those are the names of the variables in our module. So that's how you reference variables that are defined inside a module by their name. Now we've set up a type here. So this is again, a best practice when you're writing a module is to type what your variable. And in this case, it's a basic string, but you can specify a type of bool. You can specify num, or you can create a more complex object that it needs to fulfill. It could be a list of strings. It could be a map that has specific keys in it. So you can define the type pretty, pretty well. And then you can also set a default value. You don't always have to set a default, but just, you know, bear in mind, it's going to throw an error if you don't set a default and they don't give you one. Description is important. You want to include a description in your variable. And this is just general good writing practice. Describe what this variable is for. And then this is new in Terraform version 13. I don't know, it might've been 13.1 or something. They now allow you to include a validation in your variable. And I highly recommend this when you're writing modules. If you can validate the input, by all means do so because people, well, they're going to send you bad input and you want to be able to kick back an error message when that happens. So in this case, I'm looking for a condition here. So basically in the validation block, you set a condition. What's the condition you're testing for? And then if it tests to false, what's the error message you want to give back? So in our condition, I'm just doing a simple contains this returns a true or false. So that's good enough for the validation thing. And I'm going to look in this list of meets. And if the submitted value in var meet doesn't, is not in that list, it's not contained in that list, then it's going to throw this error, 
letting the user know that the meat must be in that list. That's super useful. And you could see how this would be excellent in the real world if you wanted to limit the virtual machine sizes for EC2, or if you wanted to limit the types of storage accounts, you could use an Azure, you could do all of this through the validation mechanism and just make sure you have same defaults. Like if someone requests a VM with 600 gig of memory, you might want to be able to say, well, the condition is if it's greater than 24, I'm going to reject it. Yeah, just that kind of thing. Yeah, basic <laughs> testing. Uh, and then I've done the same thing for the variable cheese and the variable shell. And then in my locals, I've defined a map here called taco and the taco assembles my taco. And then the output is actually that taco map. So the nice thing about version dot 13 of Terraform is you can actually return a full object. It doesn't need to be a string when you're returning output. And I covered this in another video, so I'm not going to go super deep, but it's actually extremely useful. Now, the other thing you'll see here is I'm invoking another module here. This is what's called a nested module. So I've broken my configuration up and I've moved salsa into its own dedicated module that's within the same folder structure. So I have a subfolder here called salsa and it's got a main.tf in it. And all this does is take the type of meat that you've submitted. So you submit the type of meat that's going in the taco. You pass that through from the main root module. And then it has a locals here. That's a map. And the map basically has matching pairs between the meat type and the salsa type. And then the return is based off of that meat value. So you basically just take the map and you look up the key of the meat and return the value that's associated with that key. Pretty cool, huh? So let's go ahead and let's run Terraform in it here from the root module. We're running this from the root module and it's going to initialize. And I'm going to drag this up a little bit so we can see the actual output that goes on in here. Now you see under initializing modules, it not only initializes the taco module, but it sees that the taco module has a nested module in it. So what it does is it also initializes that module as well. So it did that for both modules. And then if we want to go ahead and do Terraform uh, apply, and then we can just do auto approve. We're not actually doing anything here. No need to do a plan or anything. There we go. It returns our assembled taco with the correct cheese, meat, salsa, and shell. Now, just to show that the validation works, if we set var meat equals to octopus, it's going to throw an error because that is not an allowed value for the uh, taco variable. So it's going to say, the meat must be in that list. See, it kicked out an error message, invalid value. Here's the help helper error message. And it will also tell us where it, which validation rule was invoked, where we can go find that validation rule for more information. So there we go. That's, that's a pretty good idea of what goes on with modules within the world of Terraform. When you're publishing modules, like I said, you have multiple options. You can publish to a public repository, you can publish to a private one, you could just have it on a file location that's accessible to multiple people, you probably want to make sure this is all checked into some kind of source code, especially since you're ver probably going to version modules. And that's something else I didn't bring up, you do have the ability to version your modules. So you can refer to multiple different versions and test newer versions before you roll them out in production. So that's pretty cool too. So that's all I have for today. Hopefully that covered the questions that you might have about creating modules in the world of Terraform. Do you have other questions? You know what? I want to hear them. I want to hear what questions you have. Leave them down in the comments or reach out to me on Twitter or LinkedIn. That's where I get this information. And quick reminder, I do have a Patreon. And if you become a patron and you suggest a topic for Terraform Tuesday, you get priority, friends. <laughs> Bear that in mind too. Again, link is down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now.